My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how to's, and reviews. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a review on these workhorse ground protection mats. So here we've got a uh, four foot uh, by three and a half foot ground protection mat. And these are, uh, this is a full panel. We've got a half panel here and a half panel there locked together. Um, for those that are new to the channel or don't fully know where we're coming from, I'm a landscape contractor for my day job and uh, we use these to help protect the lawns. If we're doing work in a backyard, uh, we put lay them down to protect the lawn. Uh, in the past, I've used plywood. I have used the big, larger sheets, the three foot by eight foot, four foot by eight foot, big ground protection mats. But in today's video, we're gonna be specifically talking about these workhorse ground protection mats and how, uh, how they work, how they don't work. Uh, we have definitely used and abused these. Uh, I say abused because we uh, definitely push them past their limits. And I wanna share everything about them, uh, where I feel like they fit in the industry, and uh, then you can make a decision of whether you think you should buy them for yourself. So uh, back from the top, these, like I said, workhorse ground protection mats. Um, there's a lot of options on the market. Most of them are a poly option. These are an HDPE uh, poly material. And the nice thing about these, one of the first things that kind of stands out from all the other options on the market, plywood, the other uh, ground protection mats, is the fact that they lock together. So we've got uh, these, these locking tabs. So on each sheet here, or each half sheet, you've got uh, two on the top and two on the sides, and you've also got these locking tabs here. These are the uh, smallest iteration. These are the one inch thick. They also have like a two and a four inch thick ones for higher grade applications. But the fact that these lock together really opens up some doors for us. Um, we tend to be getting on jobs where we have to, to move in and turn to get into the job site. And it may not be the intended application, but I will say one of the first things that stands out, again, the, above other options, is the fact that you can lock these all together in a huge grid. And you can actually turn equipment on it and not tear up anything. So that's a, a huge starter is the fact they lock together. Um, it does have this uh, kind of a, a tread pattern on the top. So you do have some grip and you're not sliding around on these. Uh, these would be great for foot traffic um, if you're doing an event, uh, you're having a big run or a uh, um, parade or you know, event at a park or uh, a fair, anything like that. These would be great for that. As far as a landscape contractor is concerned, mostly everything we're doing is run equipment. So on the back side here, if we turn these around, we have a grid on the back side. So this is a, a what I feel like is a pro and a con. So this grid adds some stability to the soil. So this grid allows it to kind of grab onto the soil, and so it's not sliding on the ground side either. So your equipment is not sliding around, nor is it on the ground, but it does a kind of grab into your soil, and you do kind of leave some, you know, I'd call them aeration marks. I don't think you're leaving any uh, long-term problems um, on a job site, but you are going to have it kind of sink into the soil a little bit. Another nice thing about this option, in contrast to other options, is you have these breathing holes. So it, these breathing holes make a huge difference. Um, when we use the larger sheets of plywood, you basically have to take those up every day at the end of the job. Where these lock together and has these breathing holes, you can literally lay this down for weeks at a time and uh, the salesperson actually said it kind of creates a greenhouse effect underneath there. He said that they actually have pulled these up on previous jobs and it left behind greener grass than what was elsewhere. So the, the hot air kind of gets trapped in here and actually will cause the grass to grow more and more green. Uh, but having that breathability keeps the lawn viable. Uh, for any of those that know, when you uh, cover up grass or lawn uh, and it doesn't have oxygen and air, uh, it starts to decompose. It starts deteriorating and it starts to smell and rot and just not a good deal. So having those breathing holes makes a huge difference. And again, it totally sets these aside from the rest of the market. So, um, weight is so, so nice on these. They are, um, I wouldn't say they're weightless, but they are very lightweight, um, especially in contrast um, with some other options out there. Um, and they're easy to maneuver with one person because they're broken down to these smaller pieces. Um, this is a one man pickup. And that's really important to me. Um, I don't have a huge business. Uh, we don't always have two guys on a site to be moving around panels. Uh, the big 4x8 sheets of plywood or um, ground protection mats, you can move with one person, but it's really labor intensive and this is much, much easier. So huge props there. So I'll drop in some clips here, kind of our first job site, um, setting these up, using them for the first time. And all I have to say is I was very impressed 
uh, was, was how they went together, how they laid out, how everything clicked together. Let's go the other way with them. Because as we go this way, we can just jog a little bit over. Oh, I see. There we go. Oh, and I don't these think, middle ones. Yeah, see, I don't think we locked these middle ones in. Can I kick it, or do you want I think if the panels are lined up, they should go in pretty good. Some of them are easier than ours. One of the cons to these, and I would say this is very much on par with plywood, is you have to be setting it down on semi-level ground. You're not going to have any type of flotation with these. You're not going to be able to bridge any gaps or any holes. And uh, same thing with plywood. When I've used plywood in the past and there was a, a hole in the job site, you know, if I'm running track equipment over it, it usually kind of floats over it pretty well. But if I'm running a, a truck or a trailer and it's a piece of tired equipment and, and the ground's really soft or if there's a, a air gap underneath it, it will blow out the plywood. And uh, I've got some panels over here, we'll pull them up and show you. Uh, we did have on this job site a couple places where it was really kind of floating uh, some big gaps. And uh, we also had a couple spots where we had some really large rocks. I'll show some pictures of that too. Probably two, three, four inch sized rocks where we had a rock sitting on the surface here, ran a piece of equipment over it and it pushed through. So let's go ahead and show you those panels, kind of see the worst of what these panels have to offer. So here we got two panels. Um, Moving up one man, this, this is what I would say is uh, doable, um, but on the limits of what I, you know, you're not gonna be doing this all day long with two panels, but you're very capable of doing that. So again, one of the cons, um, this does pick up some dirt and mud in the bottom here. And if we look on the other side, we've got, see I've left these panels out specifically. What's going on with this one? right here so let's show you how this break down so we got this little pin here pull up on that we got a pin over here we pull up on that and then this piece lifts out and we separated our piece out so right here actually is probably where that rock went through so I'm not sure how easy that is to see and on the back side here you can see kind of where the this is cracked and blown out right here. So, um, again, like I said, we've definitely superseded their expectations. That was a lot of force going in that one spot. And uh, because, you know, again, pros and cons, um, because they're lightweight panels, they've got this kind of an engineered molding, um, but that also uh, gives it some weak points, whereas if you have the solid stuff, that's all one solid sheet, they're gonna be stronger, but they're also a lot heavier. So there's that panel. Okay, now onto this panel. This one was on the very edge of our trench. We had, we were on a pretty muddy job site and we had two kind of ruts forming. And it also, as we were entering this job site, we were turning right on the edge of these mats, which is definitely uh, not ideal. And this one we had break off our clip right here. So right here, this tab clip broke off. We've got a break right here. You can see that crack coming down there. And on the back side, same thing. So we've got a crack right in there. So learn from us, use it in the right application, and um, buy it for your, your job needs. You know, if, if you're gonna need something that's just indestructible, durable, you're gonna be putting it over hills and valleys and all that, first of all, plywood's not gonna work. This is probably not gonna be your best product for it. You're probably gonna have to look elsewhere. But if you need something that can lock together, you can turn on it and move around. Again, I don't know if that's recommended by the manufacturer. I mean, we got plenty of like dings and dents and scratches in here. We had a lot of little rocks. We had a lot of inch to two inch rocks in here that we were driving over as we were uh, laying a rock in our retention pond. And it totally just held up to it. Um, again, we were on site for several weeks and the grass looked really good afterwards. Great option. So as far as the cost goes on these, first of all, let's talk about quantity. I think these, we got 12 panels. And a panel, like I said, is considered two connected to each other. Uh, and then if you split them in half, it's a half panel. So I think we ordered 12 panels and they came on the upgraded plywood, um, the upgraded pallet 
which has a place to strap it down to, which is super nice. Um, it's got straps you can hook it on, you can hook it up the forks and move around. Um, and I think online they're about $150 a panel. So basically, you know, if we were to do 10 times 150, we're at 1500 bucks. Any type of ground protection you're looking at besides plywood, you're looking at a minimum of spending two, three thousand dollars, maybe four thousand dollars, and that's a lot. You know, it took me a long time to get a place where I could justify buying some ground protection mats. Um, one thing that helped me justify it was doing YouTube videos. Another thing was just getting enough jobs where we actually needed it, and I actually started charging for ground protection mats. Um, so that's a big thing. If you're not charging for it, it's really hard to justify the cost of plywood or anything else. But start charging for it. Charge an extra. You know, you, you can tell your clients, I'm gonna. I'm gonna mess up your lawn and leave and have to repair your front lawn, or we can use ground protection mats and save your front lawn. Regardless, you're paying for the repair or you're paying for the protection mats. But I kind of just look at it as a rental. Um, you know, some jobs would charge 500 bucks, some jobs would charge 750 or more, depending on how many we use, how we're gonna be there. Um, so I mean, if you're charging, uh, you know, say a 500 bucks, you know, to pay for these, and you need um, two thousand dollars worth of these, it only takes four jobs. To pay for them, really pretty easy. Um, with plywood, I think uh, right kind of uh, spring of 2021, prices were still pretty high, but I was on a job where I needed them, and I had another job coming up that I would need them for also. So I needed to purchase them. I think I spent about a thousand dollars on ten sheets. Um, just absolutely ridiculous pricing, um, but it is what it is. And I know prices have come back down some. I don't know where plywood's at, but with plywood, it's just you're just throwing your money away. I still got several pieces of plywood out on the side of the shop here, and and they work, but they only work for a season or two, depending on how hard you use them. And they get wet, they get waterlogged, they they just start to have problems, and the edges start chipping off and blowing out. And you know, if you're, you know, basically after, I would say after two or three years, maybe five years max. You could have bought a set of these, and I think on their website for a Workhorse they say it has a five-year warranty. Um, I don't really see them not lasting five years. Uh, like I said, again, using them in the proper condition to where you're not blowing out stuff. And these are still usable panels. Uh, it, it's just the more you use it like that, really, really rough beyond their what they're intended for, it, it's going to start breaking to a point where you can't use them. But as far as the quantity of panels I shoot for, I shoot for. Um, probably closer to 20 panels. This is a little bit light for us. Uh, it was perfect for this one job we did, and I'll show you again how, how big that entrance was that used about all of these panels. Um, but you're gonna want probably closer to 20. And when you order, you wanna order in a full pallet. So order a full pallet or two full pallets, and that's gonna be your cheapest price for shipping too. So ground protection mats, just like anything good with the business. Pony up, get the good stuff right the first time and you won't write it, you won't look back on it. Check out the other video, like I said, we're gonna do a comparison on the ground protection mats, uh, these workhorse ones, versus the poly ones, versus plywood. I'm gonna talk about it, talk about my experience, what works well, what doesn't work well. Check out the future video. Um, check out workhorse if you're interested in these, and uh, thanks for watching Thrifty Garage. We'll see you on the next one. These are a four foot by like three and a half foot. Let's just do some quick measurements on that. Okay, we got four foot by three and a half foot. Totally right.